So today I'm going to be talking about floating teeth in horses. So what is floating? Floating is basically a process to smooth down a horse's teeth using a file called a float, which is where the term floating comes from. Um, and it's basically a, a dental exam will be needed by either an equine dentist or a veterinarian um, to see if it's needed. It's usually done once a year um, in horses and it can be done with or without sedation based on the temperament of your horse. And it's a little bit more common in older horses. So why is floating necessary? Horses teeth are always growing. Um, they have around 40 to 42 teeth and this, I know it looks like a bunch of teeth, but that's actually one tooth. Um, these back ones are the molars and the ones towards the front are the premolars. Um, their teeth can become very sharp as you can see here. There's very sharp edges um, on the outside of the upper molars and the inside of the back molars. And that's actually due to the way the horse's um, skull is positioned, which I'll talk about in the next slide. Um, but these sharp points can actually make it really difficult and painful for the horse to properly chew its food. And for a horse to digest their food completely, it's a very essential step for them to grind it on a flat surface. And a normal horse's teeth should be um, very flat. It shouldn't have any of these um, sharp edges. And as you can see here, this is um, an ulcer, and this is very painful for the horse, and it can also get infected, and it looks really gross. It can make their breath smell bad, or even worse than normal. Um, but yeah, so as you can see here, um, the upper jaw is wider than the lower jaw, which causes a natural wear pattern. So the outside of the upper molars and premolars will be longer, and the inside of the um, lower premolars and molars will be longer so that so you'll get this weird like overhang on the outside and on the inside um, and it's typically a little bit more painful when the upper molars have the overhangs because that's what's digging into their gums and causing those ulcers um, so before you go back to that, are you going to point out the name of the, the tooth there that looks like it's doing nothing this so this is uh, a wolf or a wolf tooth can be here, but then these are technically called the canines, and then these are the incisors. Okay. Um, so all horses have those. Yeah. Mm. So signs that floating is needed. Um, you have unusual head movements. If they're throwing their head when you're riding or while they're eating, if they're tossing their head, that's all signs that there's pain inside their mouth. Um, other mouth discomfort, such as they won't take the bit if you're trying to put it in their mouth just because it's painful, or if you're trying to look inside there, they're like, grabbing their head away from you or acting like a little bit more touchy than normal, especially if you have like a very calm horse and they start doing this, that's a sign that something's wrong. There's some pain going on in there. Also eating very slowly and chewing on one side of the mouth or excessive salivation. Those are signs that they're trying to alleviate the pain on one side, say they could have an ulcer on that side. So they might be tilting their head and trying to chew only on this side, the left or the right side, just depending. Um, those are signs, and then dropping or losing grain or any other food. Um, that's just them not being able to chew properly and they're trying to get it, um, the food like down as quickly as possible. And if they're losing a lot of grain, that just means that they're not chewing properly. Um, and by the time that you see these signs, that means that you need to take care of the problem as soon as possible, because that means they have been in pain for quite a while. And usually these things um, are caught on like the end side, so they already have an ulcer or they're already in pain. It's kind of hard to catch them at the very beginning. So the cost of floating. Um, the price can range from between $80 to $150 per horse, depending on where you live, where you live. Um, but it's usually only done yearly, um, so it's not too expensive. Um, some people do it more than once a year. It just really depends on what you want to do for your own horse, but yearly is definitely recommended. So the instruments that are used are, are a mouth speculum, which is designed to hold the horse's mouth open. And where the mouse is, this is a metal piece that, um, these two metal pieces hold the mouth open by pressing against their incisors. And it's adjustable to any horse, which helps the um, equine dentist like reach in there. And then these are the floats. So this is the typical um, old fashioned st uh, style file. Um, that can be handheld and they're really long so that you can reach um, the back molars because a horse's teeth are even way further back than most people think. You also have 
Here it's a, just a picture of all the instruments in a disinfectant solution. Um, the solution is also used to wash the horse's mouth out before the procedure is done because if they do have ulcers, there is probably like grass and other feed stuck up in there. So you definitely want to get that out. And then nowadays they're starting to use uh, power floats, which are motorized floats with a carbide or diamond file. Um, carbide and diamond are used just because a horse's tooth is very hard and even the diamond um, files get dull pretty easily, so they have to be changed out frequently. Uh, but it makes it a little bit faster, and there are different head pieces that you can put on here to reach all like the nook and crannies of their teeth and get that really smooth. So there are secondary signs to look for for a horse that needs their teeth floated. Um, if your horse has uh, a lot of weight loss or hasn't been eating correctly, you can notice that they're getting a little bit thin. That could be due to an ulcer in their mouth. Um, because obviously they're not wanting to eat as much since it is painful for them. Um, it makes them less willing to chew and they're also more prone to swallowing feed that is not completely broken down so it can lead to that uh, choking, which luckily for them they can still breathe even if they're choking but it is a serious situation so if that's happened that could be one of the main reasons. You can also see um, quitting which is when a horse packs uh, grass or feed between their gums and their teeth and that's for them to alleviate pain and it will cause the horse's cheek to look full um, so that's another thing to look out for or if they had bad breath as I said before it can be caused by these ulcerations or um, the quitting because they're stuffing food back there so it's getting all this bacteria in those ulcers which is something that you definitely don't want to have and this is actually a picture of the floating process being done Fast forward a little bit. You can see he's using um, a power float, one of the motorized ones that I was talking about before, really trying to get that surface nice and flat to grind down all the feed. You can see. Look at the sharp. Yep, oh, it's very, very sharp. And I think this horse, I don't know if you can tell because the power float's in the way, but there's lots of ulcerations. It's dirty in there. So this will just help um, keep the horse healthy overall, and it's just easier for them to keep their own food and just enjoy their life. But yeah. It's a nice video. Yeah, it's a great video. Good quality. And you can see how thick their teeth are. And so it's really important for them. Like, these are very, very, very sharp. And I'm actually on the equestrian team, and so I've seen this done in person, and it's kind of gross. It smells really strange. But it's really interesting, and it helps the horse out a lot. Alright, and I think the last is just my work excited. Give Lola a round of applause. Yeah, it's always fun to watch horses get floated. Mm -hmm. Now, the ones that you watch, do they sedate the horse at all? Or Our not? horses were all sedated. Yeah. Okay, so they're wild enough. That they're yeah. Okay, I'll let you point to people because there's. Um, yeah. Do they like suction out whatever's being shaved off? Yeah. So the question is, do they suction out the grinds um, from the file? No, they don't. Usually, it's a pretty fine like us and they also have the disinfectant solution that they can use to like squirt and rinse out anything but it never like is a huge chunk that comes off yeah so you mentioned equine dentists and i don't know about the laws here but in ohio only vets are supposed to do horses teeth um but it's really hard for them to enforce that because technically that's a it's enforced by like the vet board so they don't really have any authority mm. over people who just go yeah. around doing it yeah i think in indiana i don't think you have to be a dvm Anybody back me up on that? New Jersey, you don't have to either. In New Jersey? I don't think you do. You can get certified to do yeah, that. Yeah, I think it's a case in by Ohio case. Ohio has strict laws, and technically in Ohio, you can't even give a horse an injection unless you're a vet or it's your own horse. Theoretically, yeah. Yeah, because I know in Massachusetts, like my, um, the woman who I used to work with at an equine vet, she, when she originally owned horses before she was a veterinarian, she would do it herself, which I don't recommend. I think it should definitely be done by a veterinarian or someone who is certified. Yeah. Just in case. But, yeah, it's, so not, it's not that terrible. I don't. Yeah. I don't really think a DVM. It's almost a yeah, waste you know of time how to do it, for an equine vet to do it. that. Yeah. So it's basically, what you, it's the technique. Mm -hmm. is, that's all it is. Yeah. If you got more technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to um, go around with the shelter doing racetracks in that there, and they had someone there that like she was like kind of like a barrier. She would have clients, and she would just go around and do teeth. But she was really good, and probably better than a vet because I tested yeah. how she did. Exactly. Class. Somebody that does a lot would be better than a vet. To be honest, mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, I mean, those things are sharp. <coughs> so, like, I didn't see in the video, like, a veterinarian I used, um, they, like, frequently rinse with water.
water to keep it from getting too hot in there because like the temperature of the grinding is yeah is that something that you guys do um yeah so he was using or the our vet that came to our barn he was using um, just the solution that he had there to just um wash it out basically but also he was doing like mainly the premolars that are a little bit closer to the front so it wasn't too hot um but yeah that's just a typical that's a consideration though, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. no especially with the power motor or power files yeah. for sure yeah. yeah that's a good point because if you're doing it by hand you don't get exactly yeah Okay, it's a very interesting thing with horses, but those teeth uh, get so sharp, and that was a good video. And here's another thing that might happen, <clears throat> and this doesn't happen very often, but cattle and horses that have rabies have some, have some of the same symptoms she's talking about, where they might be tender in their mouth, and the worst thing that you can do is think that they're choking and going in there, and if they this has happened to some vets. They'll go in there thinking the horse is choking, but it actually has rabies. And then look at those teeth. What are they? And the rabies is virus is in the saliva. Although most vets would be vaccinated already, they'd get probably a booster. But yeah. you've got to be careful because I've heard of some vets thinking, oh, or owners thinking the horse is choking, going in there, and you saw those needles on the edge of those teeth. And if it has rabies, you're just setting yourself up. Well, yeah, they would give another, they would give uh, antiserum. Yeah. There's a protocol with, if you're, vac if you're not vaccinated for rabies, if you're vaccinated for rabies, how long has it been? Everything has a protocol. Um, one of my friends was recently bitten by a dog that wasn't vaccinated, but instead of getting, if they just had them watch the dog for 10 days rather than give her anything at all. Right. Yeah. And the one thing, I guess, if you're ever bitten and it's, you know, unknown, soap and water. Washing a wound is one of the first things I always recommend right away. And any, anybody can do that right away. And, you know, in this case, watching the dog for 10 days, I guess, is fine. But, you know, sometimes you get bit and the dog runs off and then you'll never, you know, never find out. So then you've got to assume that the dog wasn't vaccinated because that's a lot better assumption than the, to assume it was vaccinated. Right? Excellent topics, really pretty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't. But the the choke.